Somebody go get her. She's dancing like the stream. Somebody go get her. She's dancing like a stripper. Like most people on the planet, I needed flexible, well paying work that was accessible to me at my level of education and experience. Dancing fit that bill better than any entry level, low barrier work I could find at the time. Historically, I'd fallen in love with fictional characters who were professionally sexy. I found sex work a fascinating subculture within the whore end of the virgin whore dichotomy. Fallen women who had recognized the bullshit that society inflicts on women and femmes and taken it and flipped it on its head to make it good for themselves. The most obvious positive consequence of entertaining was positive cash flow. I don't come from money, so dancing paid for a huge portion of my degree and funded my retirement account. Another great outcome of dancing was that my skill set in sales shot way up. It really steel plated my spine to know that I had the power to make someone buy what I was selling. In this case, my time, attention, expertise, and artistry. Most of the world runs on sales, and it is never, ever a bad trick to have up your sleeve. Another positive was that my body was in the best shape of my life, and I was physically stronger than I have ever been before or since. I walked with a confidence from that physical and mental toughness. A positive or negative outcome was finding out who my friends were, and who was more interested in judging and gossiping about me than loving and supporting me, and the degree to which most people in America have failed to question the stereotypes that arise from media conditioning around sex work. Stripping is a legal business, no slimier than any other form of direct sales and significantly less slimy than various types of white-collar crime we take for granted as a society. Anything involving market speculation or profiting from mass incarceration comes to mind. Yet the responses I got from people when they asked what I did ranged from incredulous, the you're too smart to be a stripper cliche, to outright assaultive, a man who recognized me at a McDonald's near my club tried to touch my crotch without my consent. The worst part about dancing was the stigma attached to it. I never told my parents, as I felt like it would cause them absolutely unnecessarily to feel ashamed, embarrassed, or like failures. Alone, I felt I could never talk them out of a lifetime of social conditioning that is so anti-sex worker. It's sort of a form of closeting, except without a rights movement as visible as the LGBTQ movement. I honestly never felt shame about dancing, but I did often feel alienated from society. It took me a long time to come to terms with the fact that no matter how deeply I know and understand that sex work is real work, that there will be somebody out there naysaying in a loud voice. There are even customers with this complex. They want to believe that you are a tragic woman waiting for a Prince Charming to come rescue you. Dancers have a nickname for this type of guy, Captain save a The stereotypes that go along with dancing are complete bullshit, to be blunt. The stereotypes society presses onto sex workers say much more about society than they do about sex workers. Society wants a woman to be demure and passive and receptive to the advances of men. A dancer is a hot chick, sweetly and assertively demanding your cash. A passive dancer is a broke dancer, just like a passive salesman won't sell to save his life. A dancer must be super confident in her service to justify the price she asks. Ask any businesswoman how people feel about a confident, assertive woman. In one relationship, dancing was not an issue at all. My partner loved and supported me and was proud to say his girl danced. He would even have my favorite dinner cooked and waiting for me when I got home at 3 in the morning. He never laid any shame or weirdness on me at all about it. To him, it was just my job. Other dancers in the club are not your friends. They're your co-workers, peers, and competitors. Some girls may be turning tricks, some girls may be pimps, some girls may have unsavory friends. All that said, a number of dancers were very sweet and kind and friendly to me when I first started, and most of that was genuine. Other dancers hooked me up with the right clothes, gave me great hustling tips, and taught me my first pole tricks. 
I did make one friend in the club, a girl I doubled with, and though we have since both moved on with our lives and gone to work in other industries, we still hang out and see each other from time to time, so it is possible to make friends in a strip club. Every time you make zero dollars dancing, or less than whatever amount you decide is worth it, you consider quitting. But then you have a great shift and make a grand, that's the way the cookie crumbles. One time a guy came to my stage and slapped a $5 bill down on top of my vulva. Without hesitation, I leaned over and slapped him as hard as I could across the face. I never, as long as I have been alive, felt that free and safe to directly punish a man for disrespecting me. Everyone's experience is different. If dancing is right for you, you'll have the fire within you that pushes you to try it. And I would note that you always have an out. My first night dancing, I told myself before I started that if it sucked, I could always go work at McDonald's. Then someone threw $100 on me and I thought, ah, I can do this. I've had a lot of cool jobs, but dancing still ranks right up there at the top in terms of overall work-life balance, pay, and satisfaction. 